Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily rename all your ROMs. You may be like, well, why do I need to rename my ROMs? This is fine. But this could be a bit neater. This is what they look like if you dump them from the official cartridge. These are all my official ROM dumps. I didn't download any of these from the internet. Um, but as you can see here, they get some product codes in there. There's underscores. Some of the names are shortened. So I want to show you a quick and easy way to rename these. And we're going to give these the proper names too. So these aren't going to be like, you know, just removing the underscores or whatever. This is going to be finding the actual name for the game. So we'll need two things. J ROM Manager will be our renaming tool. Um, and you can download it here. Um, I'll give you a link in the description. Just download the .msi file. Or if you're using Mac, you can try something else. But the rest of the tutorial is for Windows. Um, so download the MSI, install it. The next thing we need is we need some signatures. Uh, basically, the way this works is it scans your game's header or your game's signature and it matches against a database. What the database will tell you is exactly what game it is. So it's not based on the file name. You could call this like poop.nds or whatever, and it will still be able to figure out what game it is. We can also download the daily, which has all the consoles. So just go ahead and click daily and scroll all the way to the bottom and then standard dat and click prepare. This will give us the option to basically download the entire database of everything. Just click, click download. And it may ask you to click a color for verification. Just go ahead and click that. And now we have the database downloaded. So you can extract this. And you see here, here's all the databases for every single console. Again, these aren't ROMs. These are just databases. So this will just basically let us scan a game and immediately tell what game the, what the proper name for the game is. So next thing we're going to do is go ahead and load up uh, J ROM Manager. All right. So once we so we need to go ahead and extract all these databases, and this is what it looks like when they're extracted. So now that we know that we have everything extracted. We can go ahead and click import dat. And then you want to browse to, you can use like my computer and all this other stuff. We're going to browse to where we extract all these dat files. And here you can actually select which dat files you want. You can press control A for everything, or you can just scroll down to whichever specific one you're looking for. For example, we're looking for Nintendo DS decrypted. And then you can just click open. Press it again. It will ask you where you want to save it. You don't have to change this. If I'm just changing it so it doesn't overwrite. So you click OK, OK. And now it's been imported. You can also import all of them by pressing Control A and then clicking Open. But we're just doing one for now. So as you can see here, I already have everything loaded up. All right, so now we're ready to go. I have all of them loaded up. Again, loading all of them takes longer. So you can load one or you can load all of them if you want. It doesn't really matter. Go to the Nintendo section. And then Nintendo DS, if you can't see, you can bring this little tab over. So yeah, Nintendo DS decrypted. That's what we say we're going to work with. So double click this. Anyway, so this is what you should be looking at when you get started. So at the bottom, we want to put in the folders of our ROMs. So just go to wherever your ROMs are stored, find the folder, drag and drop it. You can drag and drop multiple folders if you want and the sources, um, but I'm just going to do one. And the next important thing is destination. Where do you want your ROMs to be um, saved to? Um, you want to make sure you have enough space left, and it has to be a separate folder. You don't want it to save back to the original folder, otherwise it might start deleting stuff. So, I'm going to make a new folder in here. I'm going to call it New DS. And now I'm going to drag and drop it into Destination, and now we should be good to go. If you want your ROM, by default your ROM is going to be zipped. If you go to Settings, you can tell it to, um, just make a single file that's not zipped. But most modern emulators support zipped uh, ROMs. So we can leave that alone. And under automation, we want to change this. It's going to be scan only. But default, we're going to change this to scan, then fix. All right, so now we're, we got all this set up. We got our ROM destination where they're going to be saved. We have our ROM source, where they're coming from. Again, you can have multiple sources, but you need only one destination. Let's go ahead and click scan. And it should start looking at our files. It may take a little while, but it's going to um, basically scan through all our games. And then once it's done scanning them, we'll start renaming them. So we can watch this live. As you can see here, it's building a new Nino Kuni uh, game. And as you can see before, it was called just Nino Kuni.ds. But now because of the database, it knows the full name of the Nino Kuni game. And it even is putting down the fact the region. And next up is working on Pokemon Black 2. It's taking Pokemon Black 2, which was here, Pokemon underscore Black 2.nds, and it's naming it the proper Pokemon Black version 2, um, and it says even the region, USA slash Europe, 
and now it's just going through and renaming all our games. So yeah, and if you look, these are all zipped too, so they take up less space. For example, Nino Kuni was 524 uh, megabytes, and now it is down to 378. So yeah, it saves space, and it gives you some nice naming. So yeah, this tool is really good. Um, I suggest you check it out for all your games. And again, if you want to switch consoles, you have to go back to profile and then click on, double click on the console you want to use. And the one last thing I'll note is when your file names are changed, these are your ROM names, your save files will need to be updated too. So for example, uh, here is our save file for Nino Kuni. If we tried to run this on our flash cartridge right now, it wouldn't work. And the reason why is because the flash cartridges want your ROMs and your save files to have the same name. So for example, this thing will be looking for a save file called Nino Kuni um, uh, Shiku, I can't pronounce that. Anyway, Japan Save. So what you want to do is you want to rename your ROM file. Go to rename. And this will highlight the, just the name without the .zip. So you want to copy this. And you want to paste it under name. So you rename your save file. And hey, look, they match. Now, if your flash cartridge won't load the zip file, you can just open this up and here's your .nds file inside. So you just want to pull these out of the zip files. But again, if you know your flash cartridge does not load zip files or your emulator or whatever, just go into settings and you can turn off the compression. I believe if you say single file, that will make it so it's not in a zip file. But yeah, that should be everything you need to know. Now you should be able to um, basically scan and rename all your files. And as you can see here, some of the stuff wasn't picked up. For example, we got Final Fantasy. Um, it will make sure you only have one copy of each game. Um, but I think the World Ends Review... Yeah, the World Ends Review did not get picked up. So it's possible this game's encrypted. Um, it's possible that it just didn't get the game for some reason. Maybe it was a bad dump. Uh, if you want, you can just run it again. It never hurts to run it with um, more than one setting. So we can see here, Nintendo DS in the source, and then new DS in the destination. And automation, scan and fix. So let's see if this picks anything up. And here we go. So I did have some uh, encrypted games. So it's a good thing we ran it twice. In new DS, now we have Blood of Bahamut, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Ring of Fates, and it's probably gonna pick up some other stuff. So yeah. Uh, if you're running a DS and you dumped all your stuff, it's possible some of your, your games weren't properly decrypted. So I suggest running it both times if you're missing stuff. But yeah, so as you see here, our games look nice and neat. Don't forget to rename your save files. And again, you can turn off the zip feature if you don't like it. So that should be just about everything. Now you can have all your games look super neat. And again, go back to profiles. You have to switch profiles every time you're working on a new console. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, unfortunately, I don't read the comments on this channel very often. So this is just a side channel. But again, hopefully it was helpful. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.